I'm going to start off with my biggest question. You talk a lot about visceral fat versus subcutaneous fat. So what is the difference between these two types of fats and why is visceral fat more important to focus on or maybe more dangerous than the other? You know, when it comes to research, you're looking at targets to try to identify what is the most relevant for your particular area of research. So in my opinion, cholesterol is fraught with noise. And I don't hear people talking about the fact that really when you pay attention to that particular metric, there's a lot of distraction about it. But one, your body makes it. Two, it's used to create cells and membranes and neuron, neuronal sheaths. The more of it you have, the higher amount of cholesterol, the actually the lower mortality in many forms of disease. And the lower you know, your amount of LDL, the higher your mortality. So it's really filled with a lot of disease. It's got some good stuff to it and maybe some bad stuff. But what is all bad and you don't want is visceral fat. And nothing in all my years of practicing medicine improves humans more than getting rid of visceral fat. Nothing. Nothing else comes as close. You can think of visceral fat as this biological pump, this factory inside you, deep within your abdomen. It's constantly spewing out inflammatory substances. And so these inflammatory substances go throughout the body and wreak havoc. They just cause disease. So to your question initially, it's really important to be educated about the different types of fat that are within the body. And when it comes to subcutaneous fat and visceral fat, I like to say it's the difference is like the difference between bricks and clouds. It's enormously different. Visceral fat is bad, produces harmful inflammatory substances. Superficial subcutaneous fat, what I'm going to show you a picture of, is actually good. It produces a wonderful molecule called adiponectin. And if you've never heard about adiponectin, learn about adiponectin. Yep. It's associated with reducing the amount of cardiovascular disease. Superficial subcutaneous fat is associated with lower levels of inflammatory mo molecules, that particularly coming from visceral fat. And visceral fat is just the opposite, increases those inflammatory molecules. Let's answer your question. So behind me is this model. And this is a slice through a human being, sort of like a pizza slice. So you could think of a uh, a pizza going through your abdomen, kind of at the area of your belly button, and mm -hmm. it creates an image like this. On an MRI, fat shows up as white and muscle shows up as dark. So let me orient your audience. This is uh, our muscles in the back. You're laying on your back. This patient's going through a scanner. And up here are the abdominal muscles, the top of your abdomen. And these are your side muscles, your obliques. Right there is your vertebral body, and these two oblong stuff are your psoas muscles making up your core. Now, we changed this image, adding some color to help differentiate between subcutaneous fat and visceral fat. So the subcutaneous fat is just underneath the skin, and it is painted yellow in the image above. And just to add some you know, differentiation be between it and visceral fat, which is in red. Visceral fat is in the center part of your abdomen and you can't access it unless you did surgery. You can't get to it. it. You can't see it. It's hidden deep inside of you. I call it invisible obesity. Um, Carl Lenore from Superhuman Radio has a great term for it. He calls it radioactive fat. And that's a good way of thinking about it because it, it has this, this, you know, ability to radiate out danger and damaging substances. Subcutaneous fat, you have an idea about because you can pinch this, this fat. It's right underneath your skin. So, you know, pinch the inch kind of expression where you grab hold of your tummy fat and you can feel it. That's subcutaneous fat. You'll never grab hold of visceral fat. That's deep inside of you. So anyway, I hope that explanation about the difference in terms of the biochemistry behind it is helpful and also very importantly where it's located. I know you talk about all different kinds of modalities to tackle this, but what a carnivore diet and fasting, how does that affect the visceral fat? The production of visceral fat is 
uh, multifaceted, and there are a lot of combinations and uh, contributors to its formation, and also the formation of other forms of uh, adipocytes or adiposity or fat. So there's some, you know, I mentioned one good fat is superficial subcutaneous fat. One bad fat is visceral fat. But there's uh, a few other bad players of fat that are also relevant for discussing and understanding your health. Carnivore and fasting, we see in terms of an intervention or strategy working with people that come to us for the purposes of trying to eradicate, uh, to eradicate visceral fat that carnivore has an advantage over the elimination of visceral fat relative to some other dietary strategies, such as more carbohydrate dependent strategies or ways of eating. So if you really want to burn fat, then you don't want to be having carbohydrates creating an insulogenic response. We see carnivore has a stronger ability to preferentially burn visceral fat relative to subcutaneous fat. So for uh, unknown exact reasons, the fat that gets burned when you go carnivore, you, know, you just eliminate that visceral fat. I've seen in uh, people that are fruitarians who eat an extremely high amount of carbohydrates, they tend to lose a lot of subcutaneous fat. Now, I've never scanned them because of that high degree of carbohydrates. I'm going to infer based on experience with other high carbohydrate diets, such as vegans and vegetarians who have a higher amount of visceral fat when we scan them, that the fruitarians are probably right at the top of uh, the worst kind of dietary strategy uh, that you can employ to get rid of visceral fat. So uh, carnivore seems to be the best with the zero uh, amount of carbohydrates or the lowest amount of carbohydrates, followed by um, a keto diet and, uh, and then a paleo diet or a low carbohydrate diet would be the most effective strategies. Other things can influence your production of visceral fat or make it more difficult to get rid of it, such as stress. If you're producing cortisol, you're going to... Um, uh, suppress lipolysis, and you're going to contribute to more production of visceral fat, and then poor sleep, not sleeping well, and then the ingestion or use of alcohols, alcoholic beverages, of course, you know, cheating, eating processed foods, seed oils, processed carbohydrates. And then the last one we notice is chronic exercise. And the exact mechanism that chronic exercise has in making visceral fat more difficult to eliminate. It may have something to do with simply, Emily, the fact that our bodies want to hold on to fat if we're doing a lot of long distance or durational exercise. So when we eat carbohydrates, the body in rec recognition or response to a lot of durational exercise is probably producing that visceral fat. Fasting accelerates uh, because of the lowering of insulin accelerates that fast burning. And we see uh, first and foremostly an elimination of visceral fat more than sub -Q fat. I have some follow-ups on that. It's so interesting. So a long distance runner though, they're going to present very uh, skinny. They're going to get lighter on the scale, right? And so, but what you're saying is they're actually getting fatter on the insides. You know, yeah. we take that win from the scale or from the, even from the size, but we could be causing a real storm inside. Yeah. So a lot of people just following numbers um, don't know what those numbers really are. So if you step on a bathroom scale and either you've gained weight or, or lost weight, the question that you really need to be asking from a um, health optimizing perspective is what is the tissue that's actually changing? Am I gaining uh, muscle am, or am I gaining fat? And if I'm gaining fat, what kind of fat am I gaining? Am I gaining subcutaneous fat that actually might be beneficial and protective because of the increased amount of adiponectin or am I gaining harmful visceral fat? So here's an example of a marathoner and this marathoner would run between uh, 10 to 12 marathons a year, a very large amount of marathons. And they ha have this red inside of them is visceral fat. They have an elevated amount of visceral fat inside and they just have paucity, a small amount of subcutaneous fat, the yellow on the outside. 
So in the research realm, we call these individuals TOFIs, thin outside, fat inside. And TOFIs are, believe it or not, at a higher risk for bad outcome when it comes to cardiovascular disease than individuals who are obese outside or have a large amount of subcutaneous fat. So you can have an abundance of adiposity or fat tissue on the outside, and it actually helps protect you if you have this visceral fat on the inside. Not completely, but we see a lower incidence of mortality and reduced risk. And we see this in people that do a lot of chronic exercise. And we also see this in the type of personality that comes to see me. And those are what we call alpha personalities. And they typically are people who are running companies, executives, who know how to optimize a company and they want to try to optimize themselves. And so they're constantly kind of pinching themselves, looking at their fat. And they, 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 they don't want fat or they're pretty good about getting rid of it. But when they show up, they're, they're uh, stressed out executives who are oftentimes just fill with visceral fat inside and uh, are stressed stressed out running their companies, and that probably explains um, why they're, they're, they're TOFI. But I would say about 95% of my clients who show up to me are TOFI, but the majority of people that I scan in the hospital average are people that are, are fat outside and fat inside. So I call them FOFIs, fat outside and fat inside. So <laughs> TOFIs are not that common, but if you're a TOFI, you're at a disadvantage. And so if you're listening today and you think you're thin and you're pinching yourself and you think, oh my gosh, I'm just a healthy runner and do all these marathons, you in fact probably have um, visceral fat inside and you may in fact be at a higher risk um, than an individual who's got a lot more palpable uh, subcutaneous fat outside their body and may not look as good as you do.